no more leaks, rumours, renders or speculation. Hello guys, welcome back to Tearspec TV. The all new Defender has finally been unveiled and I just couldn't wait to get talking about it. So I am sat here in my own original Defender to talk to you guys about everything we've learned from the unveiling today at the Frankfurt Motor Show because sadly I don't have access to one yet. So I'm just gonna sit here in, in this Defender and talk to you all about it. And I'm gonna start off by just saying that I think it is it looks fantastic, basically, and there seems to be a lot of negativity around it from enthusiasts, which I find incredibly sad because I don't think people are giving it a chance. Uh, but personally, I think it's very exciting um, with what is possible with this vehicle and just basically how cool a lot of the, the press material um, that Land Rover has released looks for it. So I'm going to go through some of the details because there's quite a lot to go through, and I think we can probably all agree that this launch um, was perhaps one of the most mismanaged or just, yeah, let's say mismanaged launches, car launches, uh, in a long time. And whether that was Land Rover's fault directly or not, I don't know, let's not get into that. But there were a lot of leaks um, and things that didn't perhaps go the way Land Rover expected it to. But at the end of the day, I think ultimately the launch event they had at Frankfurt, I watched it live today, this morning, uh, was absolutely fantastic. And all of the videos they've now released and pictures to go along with it um, just look absolutely superb. I think they've hit the nail on the head in that respect. Um, and a lot of the leaks, I think, didn't, you know, uh, show off the car in the right light um, because a lot of them were like poorly captured images um, that only saw it from one angle or there were just snippets of prototypes and things like that and it, it, it didn't give the car um, a fair chance and on Tierspec TV we didn't comment too much on that on, on social media or in, in videos I know we did speak a bit about the prototypes that were spotted going around um, but I didn't want to comment on the leaks because like I said I think we should have waited for today uh, to truly um, get into it because we know so much more now and I think a lot of what we've seen kind of makes sense now. Um, so basically to start off, unsurprisingly, it's going to be available in 90 and 110 variants, just like the original. And whether there's a 130 coming, I don't know. I think I heard rumours about that, but um, again, it's not been confirmed, so I have no idea. I don't think it was mentioned um, at the event. Um, and there's going to be a, a variety of diesel and petrol engines at launch. I think two diesel, two petrol. One of the petrols has hybrid assistance, I think, with next year at some point a plug-in hybrid version coming as well, which will be interesting. I think it looks fantastic, as it was said by Jeremy McGovern at the launch event. It is respectful, but not harnessing the essence of the original Defender. And I think what he means by that basically is that it, it pays tribute to it. You can see elements of the the, uh, the original Defender in the new one. Uh, for example, the very sort of flat sheer um, rear and front ends of the vehicle, the Alpine windows, the spare wheel on the back door, um, the distinct line down the sides. It's got that kind of hump about halfway up the height of the vehicle. Um, it has three front seats. Yes, three front seats. How cool is that? Um, and all that kind of thing. So it obviously pays tribute in, uh, in some regard. And I know a lot of people have, have screamed that why didn't they go down the Suzuki Jimny Mercedes G-Wagon route um, of just kind of facelifting the original or putting a, an old body on a new uh, frame. Um, which I think could also potentially have worked, but at the same time, the old Defender... You've got to remember that the old Defender, the original Defender, sorry, didn't really change from, like, what, the end of the 80s until today. Um, whereas G-Wagons and Jimneys and things have had more iterations, small jumps in between. Um, so to transform a vehicle that hasn't changed since, uh, you know, 30 years ago to today uh, is quite difficult. So I think it was always going to be um, a big jump and, and the original Defender was so, um, you know, basic, basically, as much as we love them. They are basic, they're very easy to take apart and therefore steal, they're not very safe, they're not very economical, all of the stuff that a car needs to be for the 21st century. Um, and, you know, and therefore we end up with what we end up with. But I think it looks awesome. I think it almost looks futuristic. Uh, I really, really like the way it looks. I think it's really cool. And what I've, I've actually just prepared like a whole bunch of notes because there's so much um, to go through. But it's on uh, an aluminium monocoque, not the old 
uh, steel ladder chassis, which is was to be expected as the rest of the Land Rover lineup is the same. But it's not based on any of the current lineup. It's not a Discovery Sport or a Range Rover Sport or anything like that uh, in a new uh, dress. It is it is a completely new vehicle uh, with a whole new aluminium monocoque frame. It will also be available with coil spring suspension or air suspension. That was another point that ruffled a few feathers uh, in the build-up to this event, hence why I didn't want to comment too much on the leaks, because a lot of people saw that the prototypes were running around on air suspension, and they got rather annoyed and said, why is it only air suspension? Well, turns out you can get it with uh, regular coil spring suspension as well. If you get it with the air suspension, it can raise up by 145 millimeters, which is a lot of millimeters. Um, the interior, I think, is really, really cool. Um, like I said, you can option it with three seats, so you get the centre seat, just like my Defender right here, which I think is really cool. I'm so glad they did that, because uh, that is like a staple of the Defender and really shows that they want to make this a sort of outdoorsy, um, usable vehicle rather than just something that's going to end up driving around Knightsbridge. I'm sure there will be some that end up driving around Knightsbridge, but at the same time, um, they've obviously thought about this and about how it can be used. Uh, moving on from, uh, or going off of that, as well. It has this structural beam, uh, which I think they were calling it, which goes across the whole center of the vehicle, um, which is basically the dashboard. A bit like you have on the original Defender, and that was the whole point. It's meant to pay tribute. Uh, if you look at the defend like the dash on my Defender in front of me, it's just like one piece that goes all the way across, uh, and you've got like a sort of tray in there where you chuck stuff. That's like the only interior storage you get on uh, an old Defender. Um, and again, that that's kind of pays tribute to that. And I think you, if you look at it and compare it side by side, to me, it does uh, it does pay tribute to, or it, it harks back to the old Defender a bit in that sense, which again, really, really cool of them to do that. As for more off-roady bits, we've got uh, twin-speed transmission, so high-low range, again, to be expected. And uh, no surprises, we've got terrain response, but the new thing here is it's configurable terrain response. So you'll be able to configure the powertrain, the steering, the traction control, and the differential settings all by yourself to exactly the terrain you're in, or you can use uh, their tried and tested auto um, uh, terrain response system, which basically means that the vehicle will read the terrain uh, and set up, you know, set it up for you, um, or if the terrain is kind of uh, changing all the time, it'll it'll be usable in that kind of thing as well. Three and a half ton towing capacity, um, dynamic roof load capacity of 168 kilos, uh, and a static roof capacity of 300 kilos, so you can put roof tent on it, uh, and that kind of thing. And speaking of roof tent, they are really going for the accessories market right from the beginning here. Uh, obviously with the Defender, it's had decades of companies building up products um, my uh, oh, uh, aftermarket products and my Defender is uh, no exception uh, with the number of modifications that have been applied to it as you fully well know but like I said Land Rover are really trying to get into that market themselves from the very beginning which again is really cool because you can get your Land Rover or Land Rover Defender from the factory with a whole bunch of cool things kitted uh, uh, yeah kitted out onto it um, and that ranges basically um, with everything from uh, snorkels and, and mud flaps, which is obviously quite an ordinary thing, all the way up to, uh, let me read this off my notes, an integrated air compressor and portable rinse system, which just sounds too cool. Um, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. And again, going off the options, there's a variety of trim levels, basically. There's Explorer, um, Adventure, country and urban and you can select these packs and you'll get different things so uh, one will give you, you know roof rack and snorkel and uh, um, these exterior I can't remember what they call them it's like side mounted gear pack or something it's just like a, a thing you can put s store stuff in on the side so that's like if you want to go exploring um, and then there's the country pack which is like uh, steel wheels and mud flaps and um, center row seats or if you're a farmer you know that you get the idea basically it was something like that um, and then the usual um, spec system as well, where you have like S, XS, and HSC or whatever it was. I can't remember how they ordered it for this vehicle. But something like that with the top being the X model, which was like the more sort of blingy uh, G-Wagon kind of competitor, I guess, um, which was a bit more fancy. You know, you get big like 19, 20 inch uh, black rims and you get two-tone paint job and all this stuff, uh, which you will pay for. It's like 
70 80 K if you want that top top spec but that is obviously a more posh version if you're someone that wants uh, a more of a workhorse then you're down like it's starting at like 40 K uh, 40 K for the 90 and 45 ish uh, for the 110 I believe and on top of that as well they're doing commercial models as well so if you have a company um, or you're a farmer or whatever um, and you want a commercial model to use as a workhorse and that will be available they had a really nice looking one on the Frankfurt Motor Show stand with steel wheels there was a bit of a joke about the fact that they were the only company I think at the Frankfurt Motor Show debuting a car with steel wheels on it but it looks really really awesome and again it's a bit of a throwback to the old Defender because I don't think uh, that a lot of people were expecting them to really release the new Defender with an option for proper old school steel wheels, but they look really, really cool, uh, in my opinion. And I'm trying to think what else they showed off or what other options there were, but I can't remember. But if you go onto the Land Rover website, you can go and play on the new Defender configurator, which is a whole lot of fun. Um, you can spend a lot of time uh, and potentially a lot of money getting lost in there, playing around with things. And I think that was, for me, going off of that point, one of the main or perhaps one of the only downsides of the new Defender was potentially the price. Um, new cars today are expensive, that's the way they are, um, sadly, and the new Defender is not necessarily an exception, but I will say that if you dive into it, I mean a lot of people were immediately looking at it and going, oh my god, it's £80,000. Yes, it's £80,000 if you go for the absolute top, top spec with every single box ticked. But then you'll end up with something that isn't necessarily suitable um, to be used on a farm or in the desert, for example. If you want something that is more like what I'm sitting in right now, it's going to cost you a lot less. Because actually, if you go for the base model 110, you're getting quite a lot of kit with it, at least from what I saw on the configurator in there. And then you can add various bits on top of that. And as long as you don't go silly, then it's not going to be insanely expensive. And let's be honest, um, Defenders now... If you want a nice used one or a nice used adventure edition or something, I'm talking about the original, I mean, uh, then they are like 30, 40, 50 K anyway for something that hasn't changed in like 30 years. So for a brand new one with all of the kit that it offers uh, to be paying 40, 50 K, I don't think is a ridiculous price. And it'll be less if you get the commercial model, of course. Um, so all in all, I am super, super excited about it, and I'll just finish off going off script and off of these notes and just talk about my opinion. I think it looks fantastic. I'm so excited to see one in person and eventually, hopefully, drive one as well. Hopefully, we'll have some uh, around here at some point and ha get to have a go in one. I'm really excited for that moment, of course, and hopefully you guys are as well. And like I said, I think a lot of the press material that Land Rover released with the reveal of the vehicle is so, so cool and shows off the vehicle in a really good light. Way better than the terrible leaks that have been going around for the months prior to this event. But go and check them out. There's some fantastic pictures. Go and follow Land Rover photographer Nick Dimbleby on, I think I pronounced that right, Nick Dimbleby on uh, Instagram. Um, he's an amazing photographer and he's done a lot of the photography for this vehicle. Um, a lot of the videos as well they've posted on their YouTube channel are so cool and I'll probably end up overlaying a lot of that on this video. Especially I love the the shots of the, I think there's two green, satin green 90s on white steel wheels going through a, a very dense forest and some very wet mud and things and they I just think they look so cool and climbing over rocks, going through rivers and they just look... It, it actually, to me, they look quite natural in that environment. They look like they look very, very capable. They look awesome. They look cool. And I think Land Rover has done a fantastic job um, with the new Defender. And when I saw some of the leaks, like I said, I didn't want to comment on it. But when I saw some of the leaks, I was actually a little bit worried. Like, okay, I was really trying to be positive about this because I know so many people are immediately being negative And I want to support Land Rover uh, and modern Land Rover and all of that. And when I saw some of the leaks, I was thinking, okay, is this going to be more of like a road city car have they lost the idea a bit here but then when i started seeing these videos coming out the press material and the pictures my god i thought like i was uh, so happy about the way things look and the direction they've gone i don't think they've lost the plot at all like so many people think um, i just think they've made a vehicle which is more suitable for the 21st century because as much as we love these old things let's face it it's not 
the right thing uh, for these <laughs> for this era and I think they've created something so so cool um, and I hope it does really really well so if you're one of those people that is immediately shooting it down and saying that it is and that it looks like a Kia, uh, that it's too soft, that it couldn't drive over a crisp packet, whatever you it is, whatever it is you're saying, please, please, please give it a chance. Go and check out some of the stuff they put on YouTube uh, and Instagram and wait until you've seen and driven this thing because I guarantee you it will be amazing off-road, whether you like it or not. Um, I've spent quite a lot of time with uh, modern Land Rovers. Um, I spent some time, or I spent a few days at the... Uh, East Nor um, Experience Center in a Discovery 5 doing a lot of off-road driving uh, and I can tell you that thing is incredibly capable and the Defender will only be that and some. So that is that. I think that was everything I wanted to say for now. I'm super excited. I pr could probably talk for a lot longer and I'm sorry that this video perhaps wasn't the most exciting. I'm just sat here in my Defender but like I said I had to get my voice out there um, because it will be a while before we actually get hold um, of a vehicle and I couldn't make it down to Frankfurt sadly um, for the event so this was the best I could do for now to be able to talk about it but that is all for this video we'll be at LRO Peterborough this weekend more details to come hopefully we'll be seeing many of you there and we'd love to chat to you about the new Defender as well and get your opinion thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video